Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Jared Beckwith, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the six must-know artifacts if you're learning how to read an EEG, or if you're a neurology resident and you're totally new to EEG and you have to read an EEG, I'm here to teach you the basics. I'm an EEG technologist, and here are my six must-know artifacts. Before I start showing you different artifacts, I have to explain what an artifact is in the first place. So an artifact on an EEG is any activity recorded by the EEG that isn't actual brain activity. So what we wanna look at is the actual brain activity and we wanna be able to recognize things that show up on the EEG that aren't actual brain activity so we can differentiate between the two. I got my EEG artifact examples from Dr. Sudokar Morella, and if you want to link to his full PowerPoint, I'll put the link in the YouTube description or reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll send you the link. In the frontal region of this EEG, at the top of the page, you're going to see what is called muscle artifact. Now this artifact shows up on pretty much every EEG because sometimes the patients will be a little bit tense and not everyone can be completely relaxed all the time. And people are going to move around, that's just natural. Here I zoomed in on it so you guys can see it a little bit better. That top right dark activity, that high frequency activity, that's going to be your muscle artifact. Now a way to eliminate this artifact, first you got to figure out which muscles is it coming from. Since it's coming from the frontal channels, I would say it's probably coming from the facial muscles. So in order to eliminate this artifact, you're going to want to tell the patient to just relax, relax their jaw, and usually this muscle artifact will disappear and you'll see a clear EEG signal. Now that you know that tension in the face can create muscle artifact, you should also know that chewing creates a big artifact on the EEG. It actually creates a rhythmic, kind of like spiky looking artifact. So an untrained EEG technologist may look at this without seeing the video and be like, oh, that could possibly be a seizure. That's a mistake that I made when I was just a couple months in as a student. I looked at this and I was like, oh my God, that's gotta be a seizure. And then my supervisor showed me, they pulled up the video and look, they just happen to be eating. So this is chewing artifact. Since the eye is electrically charged with the cornea, the front of the eye being positively charged and the retina, the back of the eye being negatively charged, you're gonna see blank artifact on the EEG. The, the electrodes from the scalp are gonna pick up the eye blink artifact from the eye. So what the eye blink artifact looks like is those little things that look like a V. Now, the, you could say bifrontal diaphasic potentials, or you could just say they look like a V, and they're gonna be in the FP1, FP2 type channels, the very frontal channels closest to the eyes. They look like a V, and just remember that, guys. That's the simplest way to think about it. And once you see them enough, it'll be like second nature to you. This is one of the most common artifacts for sure. When the person's eyes are open and they're blinking, you're gonna see that eye blink artifact that I showed you earlier, but when their eyes are closed, there's another type of artifact, which is called slow roving eye movements. Now this is one of the hallmarks of drowsiness. If you see this in the frontal channels, how it's kind of like a slow rolling wave, you're gonna know that your patient is starting to get drowsy. Here I'll show you another example with it outlined in a box. Here I think is a clearer example of the slow roving eye movements with them clearly labeled. So as an EEG technologist, you have to be able to label all the different states that the patient is in, whether they're awake, whether their eyes are open or closed, whether they're drowsy or asleep, all the different sleep stages. So once you start to see these slow roving eye movements, you'll know that the patient is starting to get drowsy and you're gonna to wanna to make the annotation of drowsiness like the EEG technologist did on this EEG as you can see on the bottom of the page. Two big hallmarks of drowsiness are the elimination of the muscle artifact. You can see that they're totally relaxed and also these slow roving eye movements. Another type of artifact that you'll see on EEGs, but not always, is cardiac artifact. So you see these spikes that are happening? They're kind of rhythmic too, so that might make you think if you're a beginner, oh, these have to be either seizures or interictal spikes that happen between seizures because they look super sharp and they look kind of dangerous. If you ever see something like this, you're gonna to wanna to investigate further. So usually there's gonna be an EKG channel at the bottom of the page, but there's not on this one. You're gonna be able to line up the EKG signal with these spikes, and they're gonna happen at the same exact time, and that's gonna be your clue that, oh, this is just coming from the heart and it's bleeding into the EEG signal. So the last montage I showed was an ipsilateral ear montage. Now this is gonna be a bipolar montage, but the same exact artifact, that cardiac artifact I was talking about, now, if there's an EKG or an ECG, whatever you like to call it, channel at the bottom, you're going to be able to line it up with these spikes, and you'll, that'll give you your clue 
that just this is just coming from the heart and it's not epileptic activity. The last super common artifact that you need to know about when reading an EEG is called 60 Hertz artifact. Now it's that dark, super high frequency 60 Hertz activity you can see. That's going to be your 60 Hertz artifact. Now this is generated from different electrical equipment that's going to be in the room at the same time as doing the EEG. If you're doing a patient in the ICU on a ventilator or any other type of medical equipment, it's going to create this 60 Hertz artifact more than likely. Now, the way to eliminate this artifact is by turning on the 60 Hertz or the notch filter, and it'll hopefully get rid of that dark, super high frequency 60 Hertz activity. Another way to help get rid of it is having low and equal impedances. That is key. So there's the basic overview on the most important EEG artifacts, in my opinion. There's a lot more, but those are the basics that you can start with and build up from there to get into the more advanced artifacts that are a little bit less common, but make sure you get these down and I think you'll have a good foundation of reading EEGs, whether you're studying to be an EEG technologist like myself, or if you're studying to be a neurology resident specializing in epilepsy in the future. So thank you all for watching. If there's any other EEG concepts you want me to cover, leave it in the comments below, or if you just want to reach out and say hi, I'd love your comments. I appreciate them. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next video.